Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an arctic equation. Yes, you heard it right, we're going to be solving an equation of degree 8. There is no general formula for quintic equations and anything above degree 5, but we're going to be able to solve this equation. How do we solve it? You're going to see it in a little bit. So if you wanted to pause the video at this point, go ahead and do so, because we're going to start solving the problem. Okay, so in this equation, as you see, there are a lot of terms. We have terms with 8th power, 7th, 6th, all the terms are there. This is a really, really gigantic equation. And obviously, there is no general solution for these kinds of equations, unfortunately. But we're going to be solving this uh, in a very special way. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this equation. Now, some equations are easily solvable no matter what their degrees are because they're symmetric equations. But this equation is not even a symmetric one. So how do you solve it? Okay, you're going to see now how we solve this equation. First of all, we're going to notice that uh, it's an 8th degree equation. So if we cut that in half, we end up with the 4th power of x, right? So here, here's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to be dividing everything by x to the 4th power. And why do we do that? You're going to see in a little bit, okay? All right, let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to start with the first term, which is 2x to the 8th, and divide it by x to the 4th, and I'm just going to keep doing it, okay? When I divide this first term by x to the 4th, I'm going to be getting 2x to the 4th, and then I'll be getting minus 9x cubed plus 20x squared minus 33x plus 46. I'm just going to get a constant from there. And then, starting with the x cubed, we're going to be getting some reciprocals because uh, 4 is greater than 3, so on and so forth. So, for example, this term is going to be 66 divided by x. And then we're going to be getting 80 divided by x squared minus 72 divided by x cubed. And finally, 32 divided by x to the fourth power. And all that is equal to 0. Okay. Now, even at this point, the equation may not make sense, but we're going to start doing something interesting, which is pairing up the terms. Okay, so we're going to take the first and last term and put it together. Again, this is going to make more sense as we go along. And then the second term, okay, with the second from the last, which is 72 over x cubed. And then I'll pair up 20x squared with... 80 over x squared, and I'll pair up negative 33x with negative 66 over x. And then what, what happens here is that we were able to write all the terms, right? And we got to 46. 46 is by itself because there's no matching term, and that's going to be our constant. Okay? All right, awesome. Now, even at this point, the equation may not make much sense to you, but when once we start breaking things down, it's just going to make more sense. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and factor out the greatest common factor for each pair. Now, these two work nicely, so I'm going to take out a 2. That's going to give me x to the 4th plus 16 divided by x to the 4th. Minus 9 is going to be the greatest common factor here. x cubed plus 8 over x cubed plus 20 multiply by x squared plus 4 over x squared minus 33 times the quantity x plus 2 over x plus 46 is equal to 0. Okay, does this look better now? If it still doesn't look very good, here's what we're going to do. Okay, I have x plus 2 over x, x squared plus 4 over x squared. I hope that rings a bell because we can obtain all these terms from this one. So we're going to use substitution here. And this is a very powerful way of substituting. So we're going to call x plus 2 over x something. What do you want to call that? I like u as a substitution method. So let's go ahead and call that u. Now, how do we get other terms from here? So that's what we're going to do next. For example, I have x squared plus 4 over x squared. So if I go ahead and square x plus 2 over x, I should be getting u squared, right? Okay, let's see what happens here. Square the first term, multiply them together and double, so that's going to give you 4 because the x's are going to cancel out, right? 
So it's going to be like this. Let me write it out. X 2 times x times 2 over x plus 2 over x quantity squared, which is 4 over x squared. That's going to equal u squared. Okay? So here the x cancels out, and we end up with the following. x squared plus 4 over x squared plus 4, because 2 times 2, is equal to u squared. So if I go ahead and subtract 4 from both sides, this is what I'm going to be getting. Okay? So I was able to express this in terms of u because x plus 2 over x can be squared and this can be written in terms of u. Okay? So we're going to be doing the same thing for these other terms, but it's just going to be a little different for everyone. For example, how can I get x cubed plus 8 over x cubed from, from x plus 2 over x? Well, I need to cube it, right? So you can just go ahead and cube it. Let's go ahead and cube x plus 2 over x. Now, you can cube this in different ways. Now, for example, a plus b quantity cubed can be written in two ways. You can write the normal binomial expansion, or you can write it this way, a cubed plus b cubed plus 3ab times the quantity a plus b. This is just a nicer way of writing the cube of 2, uh, cube of a sum. So let's go ahead and use that formula. We'll, we'll get x cubed plus 8 over x cubed plus, now I always have a 3 in the formula. AB is the product of these terms. So it's x times 2 over x multiplied by a plus b, which is x plus 2 over x again. Okay. Now, I know that x plus 2 over x is equal to u from here, right? Okay. So that's going to be u cubed. This is what I'm trying to find obviously. That's what I'm trying to solve for, right? X's are going to cancel out, so I'm going to be getting a 6 from here with along with the u, so it's going to be 6u. And if I isolate x cubed plus 8 over x cubed here, that's going to equal u cubed minus 6u. Okay? Let's go ahead and circle that too. Now, so far I have the following. x plus 2 over x is equal to u, x squared plus 4 over x squared is equal to u squared minus 4, and x cubed plus 8 over x cubed is equal to u cubed minus 6u. Okay, so everything was expressed in terms of u. Now, we need to take care of the quartic term, which is x to the fourth plus 16 over x to the fourth. Well, x to the fourth is x squared squared, so let's go ahead and square this term, right? If you do, we get x to the fourth plus 2 times x squared times 4 over x squared, you know, the normal formula, plus 16 divided by x to the fourth. Now, we know that the term on the left-hand side is u squared minus 4 inside the parentheses, so this means that I have u squared minus 4 quantity squared is equal to, now x squared cancels out, x to the fourth, plus 16 over x to the fourth is what I'm looking for, and 2 times 4 equals 8. Okay, so we're almost there. What we're going to do here is we're going to isolate x to the fourth plus 16 over x to the fourth because that, that's what we were looking for here, right? That was the term that I was looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and isolate it, meaning that I need to expand this. I can do it in the next step this squared minus 8. So what I'm doing here is just subtracting the 8 so that I can isolate the quartic term. Okay, now one more, maybe a couple more steps. Let's go ahead and expand this. This is going to equal u to the fourth power minus 8 u squared plus 16 minus 8. I hope you don't mind. I'm just going to combine those two steps. And here we go. We got x to the fourth plus 16 over x to the fourth in terms of u. So everything in our expression was written in terms of u here. So now I can use this equation. I can use this equation and write everything in terms of u. Okay. So I'm going to start with the 2 in the front. Okay. So that's going to be if you uh, go ahead and write it down like this. Uh, 2. So what I have first is 2 multiplied by x to the fourth term. So let me go ahead and copy that here. Maybe just back up a little bit to the left. Okay. I have 2 times this, which is u to the fourth minus 8 u squared plus 8 
okay? And then minus nine times x cubed, again, let's go back here, x cubed plus eight over x cubed, which is equal to u cubed minus six u. So it's gonna look like this, six u, okay? And then plus, I have 20 multiplied by x squared plus four over x squared, which is 20 times u squared minus four. 20 times u squared minus four. And then I have my minus 33, I think, right? 33u, it's just u, so you're just gonna write it as 33u. That's one of the simplest terms. Plus our constant was 46, and the whole thing is equal to zero. Okay, you like this better? Well, at least it's not a octic equation anymore, it's quartic. Is there a formula for quartic equations? Yes, there is. Okay, even though it's quite complicated. Okay, let's go ahead and distribute and simplify this by adding like terms to u to the fourth minus 16u squared plus 16 minus 9u cubed plus 54u plus 20u squared minus 80 minus 33u plus 46 is equal to zero, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna arrange these terms a little bit. So let's see what we get from here. Two u to the fourth, okay. I'm gonna start with the, the cube. So I'm gonna be getting minus nine u cubed. So I've taken care of this and I've taken care of that. Let me keep track. Then the next one is gonna be the u squared term. So I have 20 u squared minus 16 u squared. That will make positive four u squared. And then I have these two terms. Then the next one is gonna be the term with the u. 54u minus 33u is gonna be plus 21u. And then finally, I have my constants. 16 plus 46 is 62. 62 minus 80 is the opposite of 80 minus 62, which is negative 18, okay? And the whole thing is equal to zero. Good grief, okay. We were able to simplify it this far. Now, at this point, what are you gonna do, right? Okay, we're not gonna use the quartic formula, obviously, that's gonna be complicated, but we're gonna be looking for integer solutions, okay? What kind of integer solutions we can look? Well, we do know that if there's a rational solution, they're gonna be in the form of factors of negative 18 divided by factors of two, right? Okay, so among these, you obviously have a lot of options like plus minus one, plus minus two, plus minus three, plus minus four, plus minus six, plus minus nine, and plus minus 18, obviously, that's a lot, divided by plus minus one and plus minus two. So what that's gonna do is obviously three halves can also be a solution, but first I'm gonna look for integer solutions. Okay, you can also test these solutions out by just substitution or you can do synthetic division. There's a lot of ways you can check which rational solutions work, okay? And another thing to keep in mind is that the very first thing actually I, actually I should check is adding up the coefficients of even terms and the odd terms. Even and odd, what I mean by that is the powers. So for example, if I add two plus four, it's a six, then minus 18 is gonna be negative 12. And then if I just go ahead and add these up, 21 minus nine, that's gonna give me a 12, okay? So what does that mean? It means that uh, we, have, we have a possible solution of one or negative one. So for example, if you plug in one, you get two minus nine plus four plus 21 minus 18, and that becomes zero. So if you know that the, to find the sum of the coefficients in a polynomial, you replace the variable with one. So this means that u equals one is a solution because the sum of the coefficients is zero for this polynomial, okay? If you add up all the coefficients, you're gonna get zero. Meaning that u equals one is a possible solution. Well, you could just go ahead and divide this polynomial by u minus one, 
and then or test another solution i would probably check u equals 2 next let's go ahead and check u equals 2 it's going to be 2 times 16 minus 9 times 8 plus 4 times 4 plus 21 times 2 minus 18 that should not be too hard to check 32 minus 72 plus 16 plus 42 minus 18. I can go ahead and add these positive terms first. 16 plus 42 is 58. 58 plus 32 is 90. 72 minus 8, 8, negative 72 minus 18 is negative 90. So this is also 0. Meaning that u equals 2 is another solution. So we were able to find two solutions that are integers, which is nice. So this means that you can actually go ahead and divide this polynomial by u minus 1 times u minus 2 okay if you divide by this product you're going to be getting a quadratic polynomial which i'm going to give you to kind of like to save you the trouble here so we'll get after division we're going to be getting 2u squared minus 2u minus 9 is equal to 0. now you can tell that this is going to be a 9 because the product of these two is 2 and in our original equation, we have a negative 18, which means that the constant term is supposed to be 9. And then by looking at the coefficient of u to the fourth, you can tell that this is going to be a 2 and so on and so forth. Make sense? So by using the coefficients, actually, you can deduce the result very easily once you find out that 1 and 2 are solutions. Okay. And this equation also have, has rational solutions, which are given by u equals 3 and u equals negative 3 halves. Awesome. So we have four solutions. All of them are rational numbers. Pretty good. Now we got to go back and back substitute. Now what did we say at the beginning? We said that x plus 2 over x is equal to u, right? There we go. Okay. So that's what we're going to use to find the values of x. So we know that x plus 2 over x is equivalent to u. Then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and let me write the other solutions here as well so that I can put it all together. Okay, now I'm going to use this formula to back substitute all these values and then from there I'm going to be solving for the x values. Okay, so let me go ahead and tell you the result. Obviously, I think at this point you're probably going to figure out this fairly easily. Oh, by the way, I wrote x plus 2 over x. That should be... Let me check something here. Did I say x plus 1 over x? Or x? Okay, x plus 2 over x. Never mind, it was correct. So, so basically, what's going to happen is, for example, uh, you're going to notice that, for example, if I said x plus 2 over x equals to 3, you'll notice that x equals 1 is a solution, right? Right there. So you got one of the solutions. But that's not the only one because x equals 2 also works because 2 plus 1 is 3 as well as 1 plus 2. So we got two solutions. And then, of course, there's more. Uh, for example, if you set x plus 2 over x equals uh, equal to 1, then you're going to be getting uh, another solution. Let's go ahead and check that. It's going to be x squared plus 2 is equal to x. And from here, x squared minus x plus 2 is equal to 0. Now, this equation doesn't have any real solutions. They are going to be complex. Okay, so to keep a long story short, I'm going to go ahead and give you all the x values to save you again the trouble. Another solution could be written as 1 plus i. Another solution could be written as 1 minus i. And remember that they come as conjugates. So I guess I could just go ahead and use the notation of plus minus to save some space. So the other solutions are going to be 1 plus minus the square root of 7i divided by 2. And the last pair is going to be negative 3 plus minus root 23i divided by 4. Okay? So these are going to be all the solutions. As you can see, we have all these solutions that are uh, real and complex all together for this octic equation. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Please comment, subscribe, like. If you have any ideas to share, please share them. If you don't like the video, that's fine. Please share your ideas and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.